Hey everybody, this is Robbie at Amptigan, and today on For Operator Month, I'm going to be going over my loadout for the second time. <laughs> so just following suit here, I'm going to go from my head down. So up top, that's my Ops Core helmet. Uh, it's an Ops Core bump helmet. Um, I have it painted there. I also have a painted Rhino mount, USGI issue Rhino mount in JR. I'm attached to a Gen 3 PVS-14 auto gated. Um, it also has an LIF filter and a Wilcox amber filter on the back to ease my eyes. That way, under long periods of use, it doesn't you know, provide extra strain on my eyes and I can use it for longer at 24 hour events such as black sheep events. I also have a Surefire green and IR output flashlight on the side of my helmet as well as an US Tactical Sewing AOR1 counterweight pouch on the back with an SNS Precision V-Light. Moving down my uniform that I'm wearing right now, one of them at least, um, <coughs> this is a Tennessee Tennessee Armament Corp uh, AOR1 Gore-Tex, I'm sorry, AOR2 Gore-Tex jacket that I snagged off of eBay. And then down below these are the Toy Soldier AOR2 combat pants fitted with Cry, Lipjet Cry Precision, Ranger Green knee pads. I also have a full set of Cry Precision G3 multicam, as well as woodlands that I use when I'm not running the AOR2. Moving down, this is my first Spear Strandhog plate carrier. Um, <coughs> right now I have it set up for the, for the, uh, the MP7, so I have the MP7 front plate. I have a Mayflower quad MP7 pouch on top of that. I have a Blue Force gear quad MP7 pouch. On my right side, I have an HSGI modular radio pouch. Inside of there is a Baofeng UV5R V2 Plus radio um, that I have programmed for channels 1 to 23. On my chest here, uh, on my chest and head, I should say, this is the Prime Patriot headset. Uh, I have the, the hockey puck style push to talk. That way, if I'm shooting, I can reach up and not worry about having to hit some small little button on a smaller PTT. I can just whack it and ready to go pretty much, you know, any any way I hit it since it's so huge it has some sort of reception when it comes to that um, and the headset of course is the headset portion I love it um, super comfortable just sort of rests on the back of your the nape of your neck there um, I've used this for 12 to 15 hours at a time without moving it and I've had zero issues with that my gloves these are the line of fire tactical gloves um, I have I love these. I've had them for about six months. I've been putting them through their paces. Um, prior to this, I had some Oakley gloves that I actually wasn't a huge fan of, which is controversial, I know. Um, but these things are awesome. They have a very modular knuckle system on them. As opposed to being a carbon fiber knuckle, these are more of a rubberized um, style knuckle, but they're still very tough. Then, of course, you have the thing individual finger knuckles and finger protection, which allows them to be very, very flexible when compared with other hard knuckle gloves. Moving down, this, I guess I'll go over the gun. Uh, this is a Polar Star Tokyo Maru MP7. Inside of this, I have a PDI 605 barrel cut to the MP7 length. On the front, I have, this is the Magpul PTS AAC suppressor. This is the M4 uh, 2000 version. They do make an MP7 version, but unfortunately I, could, I couldn't track it down online. <coughs> I have this thing painted with a snakeskin pattern to match my uh, mag brand 100 round magazines on the front. I also have a Surefire Scout light with the dual output KM2 head on the front and as well as a Surefire dual output pressure switch. So I have the, uh, the standard push pressure switch, then I'll, but right behind that, I have a button in case I wanna click it in and you know leave it there for, for a semi-long period of time compared to the pressure switch. <coughs> now this thing is Polar Starred. I actually do have a video on it. It is not something that we can do, nor is it something that we'll ever be able to do. So I just wanna make that clear before you guys ask us to do Polar Star MP7. It's pretty much impossible unless you send it to our guy down in Virginia. His name's Rudy, he does great work. Moving down, this is my MDOM fanny pack and multicam. Uh, I use this for holding things like speed loaders. Right now I have a dead rag in here, but I usually carry speed loaders and BBs and things such as that. And then in the front pocket, I carry extra batteries for my gun and my Contour helmet camera. So right now I actually have extra battery in here as we speak. On my back, this is the HSGI magnet, or some people may call it the Magina. You can figure that one out by yourself. Um, <clears throat> but this thing's great. Holds five to six magazines at a time. Especially when I'm using the MP7, which allows me to use, uh, this thing probably holds all my, ma all my mags at any given time because the mags are so skinny and small. As far as my other guns go, I also have a Beta Project Tactical, technically Magpul PTS, AK-74, which I have a separate plate for with all my plate pockets on the front for my M both my M4 and my AK mags. I also have a Noveski style M4 that I use on occasion as well whenever I get bored with the AK or the MP7. On my back, I have a First Spear 612 style hydration pouches, the two liter. Inside of there, I have a source two liter hydration carrier that I've been using for a little while now. And I have that run over my shoulder and I just sort of tuck it into the side of my cummerbund here and we are good to go. Other, also on my back, I have a Ninja 77 cubic inch tank fitted to my own custom Kydex holster. Now, I, a lot of people ask me about that, so I'll go over that real quick. Um, it's essentially a Kydex holster that I made for my tank. It's custom fitted to that size of tank. 
Downsides of that, I can only use a 77 cubic inch tank. Also, it is exposed, so it kind of looks a little bit paintball-y. I was looking at having a cover made, but there were some issues with that. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be running the external tank though, because it does have some issues, such as if you back into a wall, it makes a huge clang. Also gets kind of bulky and gets smacked around a lot, and I don't, I don't wanna have to worry about my gauges getting shot out on the go. On my feet, this, these are the Merrill Chameleon 4s. I believe the newest version of the Chameleons from Merrill's, they're on the 5s now. Um, I bought the 4s because they pretty much had all the features that Merrill had to offer. They're Gore-Tex, they are waterproof, they were waterproof, not really anymore. Um, they're extremely breathable, and they also have the Vibram tread just like all the other Merrill boots have. And they're super comfy, these are the mid-length, so they have some pretty decent ankle support there. I've been using these for a very long time, almost on a weekend basis, and they've held up great for the past year or two. Okay, I didn't feel like rigging up my mask because it's about 80 degrees in this room and I am in Gore-Tex, so as you can imagine, I'm starting to perspirate pretty heavily. But this is the mask I use. Um, I use full face all the time in case you are wondering. This is what you will see me use in all the videos. Uh, on the side here, this is the Contour HD 1080p. This is one of the original cameras. This thing's old and battered, but it still does me fine. I see no reason to get a new camera because this thing's been a, a real trooper for me over the past couple of years for the YouTube. I have the Revision Desert Locust. These things are also getting pretty beat. They're all dry rotted and... Uh, disgusting around the sides. I also have a thermal lens in here. This is just a clear thermal lens. And attached to that, this is actually a JT Spectra lower. I bought a JT Spectra mask, took off the lower, cut it down, melted in the sides to fit the profile, which allows me to shoulder my gun pretty effectively. Pros to running a mask such as this, it doesn't touch my face at all, so it's extremely comfortable. The only indication that is there is the back blast I get from my breath, which isn't really a big deal. I run communications outside of the mask, which causes zero issues. It's very low profile. I run into no issues with any sort of fogging due to the high ventilation. Doesn't touch, doesn't touch the gun when I aim at all. Awesome, awesome mask. I've turned a lot of people onto this combo since I've gotten it, and I don't see myself using anything else anytime soon. All right, guys, this has been Robbie. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or message us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash ampedairsoft. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night. Then inside of that, it's a Baofeng UV5. Or, what is it called? I think it's the V2 Plus. I don't remember. It's the UV... It's the UV... You are... UV5RV2. Yeah. UV5RV2. Jesus Christ. Say it again. UV5RV2.